I am Dustin Goes to Hollywood. I am Mally Moore. And you are listening to the Silver Linings Playlist Podcast, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's most bleak endings. This is our fourth episode, right? Yes. That's sad. We don't even know. <laughs> um, so if you're not familiar with us, uh, we are a podcast that tries to take movies that have bad, sad endings, downer endings, whatever you want to call them. We try to find the good in them. Uh, this one's going to be an interesting one. I yeah. mean, it doesn't get much downer than this. <laughs> well, I mean, in a better movie, maybe, but I'm talking yeah, in okay. general, in yeah. generalities. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, get really yeah, good. You're much. not wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> uh, so today's episode is based on the title Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines. How many people do you think caught the hint last week that this is the, <laughs> the movie we were doing? I don't think anyone cared. <laughs> That's a good point, too. Um, uh, I don't know. That was a pretty. I don't even. What's the subtle hint, I guess? I mean, how many Victoria's Secret ads are there in movies, really? You're not watching enough Michael Bay movies, I guess obviously. Um, so this is, again, Terminator 3 Resident Machines. Uh, the year is 2003. The director is Jonathan Mastow. Mastow. Who has done nothing else. Yeah, he did like U571 or whatever and then got yeah, this yeah. movie. Yeah, and hasn't really done much since then. Uh, the movie obviously stars Arnold, Nick, uh, Nick Stolt, Claire yeah, Danes. Bastard. Yeah, uh, Claire Danes and Christana Loken. The, the, the bad part no is she's, idea how to pronounce she's her the name. villain of the movie and no one even knows who she nope. is. <laughs> uh, this movie had... How much do you think... I know you're looking at the notes, but how much do you think the budget was for this movie? Didn't think it was that high. Yeah. It looks like it was made off about a quarter of that. So this is this will be a listener thing. If you're listening right now, say out loud, how much do you think the budget was for Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines in 2003? Well, you're wrong. You are far, far off. It was two hundred million dollars. Where did all of that money go? Because it did not go Arnold's into the pocket. Because we'll talk about that when we get there. All right, uh, that's in the trivia this section. This is why at the I don't end. read your notes beforehand. <laughs> uh, the movie only made four hundred and thirty-three million dollars worldwide gross. Now I know that's a lot of money, but when that is only double your budget. It's not that yeah, much. Yeah, because the two, the 200 million probably doesn't include like the marketing cost. No. I'm assuming. And the movie somehow still holds a 70% on Rotten Tomatoes. That seems high. That seems way too high. Uh maybe there well, what do you what do you think of the movie? For it. There might be a reason for it. What do you it. think of the movie? Um overall, I'm not a big fan. It I, has its moments. It in, has its moments. In the five, where does this one rank for you? Oh, man. I guess the real question is, is it above Salvation or not? Because to be honest, I don't even really remember Salvation that well. Mm. And I couldn't do more than like 20 minutes of Genesis before I gave up. Oh, I made it completely all the way through Genesis. How was that? And I, hmm. So that's number five? Yeah. All right, so no, number four is really the... The question. Yeah, what's three and what's four? Because, I mean, we... It almost seems like it goes... We know what the first two are. Yeah. Well, f- for me, I-, I don't know. I mean, it's obviously one or two, but I'm, I'm thinking number one, I- yeah, it's got to go two, right? Judgment Day's got to be number one, right? Yeah, Judgment Day is always number I just, one. I mean, number one is... The first one's still a lot of fun. No, it's but really good, but... Number two is a well, more well-crafted movie. T2 is movie. incredible. Yeah. Um, Man, I don't know if I would put this over Salvation, like, thinking about it, really. And I can't really say for sure either, because I don't even really remember Salvation that well. And I, we, I've seen this movie now twice in the past, like, two weeks. Salvation kind of did the whole I Am Legend thing, where they had a great ending, mm. and then it didn't test well once, so they changed it to something that was shit. Mm-hmm. But if again, if they had kept that original ending, it would have been incredible. I, I I'm not going to get into it right now. Like, I don't look, like look it up that they if do you want, that. I don't like that studios do that. That they'll have an ending, test it, and then change it. Yeah, that, you can't do that. That's you might Apparently as well change the whole movie. Well, you got to change the whole movie then. You can't. I mean, the ending is crafted based on the first two acts. So if you change it, exactly. <sighs> whatever. Um, I don't know, man. What would you your tomato meter be? Is it fresh or no? 
I'd give it a fresh. This is where I'm confused there's, on there's Rotten some Tomatoes. Reasons. There's some reasons. This is where I'm confused on Rotten Tomatoes score. I thought 65 and up was certified fresh. Wait, what is it? It's I don't know, because this movie is a 70, and I've seen other movies, I swear, that have been like 65% and have been certified fresh. Maybe that means it's got to be at least that for audience and critic, maybe. Wait, so is this certified rotten, or is it No, fresh? it's just, it's neither. It's just literally just a picture of a tomato that says 70% on it. Normally, it'll have the... the they little... were as split as I am, apparently, then. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, so let's listen to... So I have an opinion on this movie, I just don't know what it is. <laughs> well, maybe we'll find out at the end. After we talk about it. Fingers crossed. Uh, let's listen to the trailer, if you want to call it that. It is time. There's a new Terminator. The TX. It is designed for extreme combat. It's faster, more intelligent, and more powerful. Oh my god! It has been programmed to destroy other cybernetic organisms. Was sent back through time for one purpose only to kill us all. So, this trailer's awful. <laughs> it's so bad. The it's voiceover, so bad. The voiceover kills me. Like, the just the very end, to kill us all. Like, it's like, for one purpose, and then like, it, she sh it shows uh, the TX turning around. I just want it to be like, boobs. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. It's like a car commercial for like, the 90s. Like the night, like it looks like it came out in ninety seven. This would have been like a like it's cut the same way a like, car commercial would have been. <laughs> T, this that T two came out what year ninety? It's either ninety or ninety one. I want to say ninety. And it looks so much better than this. Mm -hmm. Even the trailer, trailer like just quality everything. This trailer is so bad. It's very bad. They they it doesn't even really give you the tone of the movie really. No, it and the entire trailer is talking about the TX, who I think you you barely see in the trailer. Yeah, I mean you only really you see glimpses of her here and there, but yeah, yeah, yeah it's ninety one by the way. Uh, T two is oh. ninety one. Good year. All right, so I want to discuss the film obviously, and then get to our silver lining. But we have a lot to talk about in the trivia section, and uh, it gets really weird. Yeah, don't 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 read forward. I want to get all your right, honest right. reaction. But yeah, let's 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 talk about the film. Talk about the movie. Let's yeah, go. Let's let's kind of. I don't want to rush through it, but let's get through the the beat by beat. What we need to do. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and say the first thing. Worst opening sequence of all time. <laughs> Are you talking about just the image of the nuclear bomb going off, and then? No, just the entire like the first five minutes are all over the place. Yeah, it's... we are cutting between, uh, riding a motorcycle at night to. Construction. Terminator War to construction. The suicide bridges. To, it's all over the place. <laughs> I think that's the same bridge that Joe Dirt and Brandy get back together on. Because it looks Holy like Holy shit. It looks like it. <laughs> Does it not? Or is it just me? I think you're right. I, don't, I, I, I think I saw it's that the same bridge. bridge from, oh my god, it's the same bridge from End Time, too. <laughs> Maybe it's like that's what's happening on the other side of the bridge. Is you see Joe Dirt about the job. <laughs> Um, my first note is that this is a super convenient movie. Like everything that happens is so convenient, so the timing couldn't be better. You know, it just plot like, uh, 
I don't want to say plot holes, but conveniences to plot. Oh, Things yeah. that happen. Well, that plot like, conveniences. Yeah, definitely. I completely agree. So we get this first narration. It's John Connor. But the first thing we see is just a nuclear bomb going off for yeah. whatever reason. And then we just cut to black. Nick, Nick, Nick Stahl just did not care about this narration at all. No, this was a, this was a late was, post. He's he already done rap. He that in hard. Yeah, most deaf. Uh, but yes, yeah, any movie that starts off with this much narration has got problems to begin with, yeah. I think. How did T2 start off? It starts off... Just, I don't know. Probably something cool. I'm trying to think. Like it's, I know. I think Linda Hamilton does do some narration at the beginning, but it's not this much. Yeah, but it's Linda. it doesn't give you Linda exposition. Hamilton can pull off a sweet narration. And it doesn't give you exposition. It's literally just her doing her philosophy kind of on the whole the whole movie, which is better than this. And I will say we cut to the future here uh, for a small glimpse of John Carter in the future. And this John Connor, I said John Carter. <laughs> Yeah, John, that. <laughs> John Connor in the future with some horrible age makeup. Like it doesn't. No, it's. Oh, I, that. It's. Yeah, no, he looks ridiculous. It's just goofy, like straight up goofy. It doesn't look like he's aged. It literally looks like you just put some extra skin on his face, and that's about it. <laughs> My second note after this, I skipped most of what happens in the opening part and just straight went to. The whole point of the hint was this Victoria's Secret ad. Because nothing happens of any significance. Wait, let, before we get to that, I will say, the one part of this movie I do like, her the TX's arrival mm. is cool as shit. Oh, um, I don't remember exactly. I remember she just shows up naked in the street, but is there anything else to it? No, no that's basically it. Oh, okay. No, no, uh, no. <laughs> um, it's like, so you know how like it's when they arrive via time travel? I really hope like everyone listening bubble. to this has seen Terminator 1 and 2. Yeah. If not, stop yeah, right it. now. Your first go in, away. If this is your first instance in the Terminator, something is wrong. Yeah, this is not a good time. <laughs> um, so, like, they arrive in, like, this, like, little, like, sphere of light and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's just really, like, all, like, she arrives, like, in, like, the window of, like, a department store and, like, all the mannequins, like, melt. Yeah. And then, like, the window melts and then she's just there. Yeah. Um... But yeah, I, I that's my next note is I nothing I don't think of any importance really happened. She gets she uh, kills this woman, steals her car, uh, and gets pulled over by a police car because she's driving you know erratically. And she as she's pulled over, she notices this Victoria's Secret ad, and I don't remember exactly what the ad says, but she gets this idea: oh, I should have bigger breasts. I I don't know what purpose that serves because she's still gonna kill this guy at the end. What is the point of that? I think they just had a cool idea to like fit it, make it work. Right, guys, great joke we can use. Yep, that was that, completely yeah, pointless. That was an onset thing. Had to have been. That was that couldn't have been. In the <laughs> I script. certainly hope that wasn't planned. <laughs> um, <coughs> so Arnold's back. You know, he spawns off in the desert. Yeah, he is. And my next note it just says gay bar. Yes, right? It does. Is, is, this, is this a gay? It's not a gay bar. It's like a Chippendale out in the desert. Basically, I don't know. I don't really know much about that sure. area. So I'm, I'm guessing. Um, yeah, I don't know. That was strange. Um, anyways, it's 2003 when this movie comes out, right? Yep. And we, you know what I'm going to say. Yep. How many times in your past decade have you told someone to talk to the hand? You know, let's, let's take it back because 2003 was more than a decade ago. Let's say past 15 years. How many people have you said talk to the hand to? Maybe once. Uh, yeah, maybe. I honestly can't recall the last time I said that. I feel like this, this again, was just so we could have the talk to the hand part later. Like it's I feel formulaic. like the last time I said that was probably mocking this movie. Yeah. Like two hours ago. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, so, yeah, Arnold takes this YMCA rejects outfit. Oh, uh, yes and then, of does. course, we get the badass shot of him stepping out of the bar, just like the second movie. But this time, there's a little fun added into yeah, it. Yeah, there is. And what is that? A star-shaped sunglasses. Elton John glasses that he throws I on. wish he had kept those the entire That would have been movie. great. There's got to be another cut where somebody digitally put those in. For With time. all the other... Jo- How is that, like, the joke where they were like, no, we got to get rid of those for the rest of the you movie? You know what it feels like, though? We're maybe 10 minutes into the movie. Maybe maybe 15 if we're really stretching it. Maybe. Well, that opening narration lasts for yeah. about half an hour this in is, itself, so... These are a lot of jokes for a Terminator movie. Yeah. Up front. Yeah. Did T2 have any 
joke jokes like this up front? Not like they weren't like slapstick like this is. Yeah, this what, is because yeah. T two opens T two opens with that awesome battle in the future. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. And then this opens with that horrible narration and bad jokes. Yeah, the the uh, T one thousand never made his dick bigger. That, I mean, he not might that were shown on screen. He might have, yeah. Um, and again, back to what I said about being convenient. It's just convenient. Arnold happens to find some normal looking sunglasses and the keys in the visor. How often do keys and visors really happen out in the real world? I feel like that is only a movie thing. Who leaves their keys in the visor? No one. Yeah. Because th- unless they live in literally the safest place on the face of the planet. Yeah. And apparently the desert is the safest place. I, l- I grew up on a farm in the middle of nowhere. And you still didn't. And I that. still locked yeah. my car. <laughs> and you had no neighbors for miles. And you're just like, I still could lock my keys. Just like, I'm not gonna leave my keys out there. <laughs> um. So, uh, John Connor is robbing a vet's office with a paintball gun to get some kind of meds, I guess. Because yeah, why is he robbing a veterinarian? Is it, are we allowed to believe this is because of the bike accident he has that he just happens to limp his way to a vet office to oh, get painkillers? Yeah. Is it really that bad? I mean, he doesn't seem. It didn't seem like that bad of a wreck. It confuses I mean, me every time. Like by this point, every time I watch the movie, I'm so zoned out. You just kind of accept that it. I miss these details. <laughs> yeah. It's like, he, oh, cool. Whatever. He, I don't care. He robs a vet's office, and then uh, Kate, who is one of the veterinarians, uh, happens to show up, and it's like five in the morning. She gets a call because there's a break in. Goes mm-hmm. in, finds out it's him, locks him in a dog kennel, and this is uh, this is so weird to me. I feel like this is just out, so there was another body count. Like in this shot, but in the scene, but uh, this woman named Nancy shows up with an emergency vet visit, and Katie even says it's five thirty in the morning. Who wakes up and is like, "I got to take my animal to the vet." It's five in the morning. <laughs> like, who is that obsessed with a pet? Like, the, and then she even freaks out. She's like, "Where's the doctor?" It's like it's five thirty in the fucking morning. Why are you even awake? I mean, if my dog was sick, <laughs> but you realize what time a vet opens. Are you going to go to the ER? Well, maybe, yeah. Then go to the ER. Don't go to the vet's office. If there's a chance the vet's going to be open, I'm going to try. Well, she just happened to get very lucky that someone was there at 5 (laughs) a.m. No fate but what we make, Dustin. Good point. Uh, So the TX arrives and shoots the fuck out of Nancy. Yeah. For what reason? For showing up at 5.30 in the fucking morning, apparently. This is another plot device where Nancy is killed just so we can have this licking blood scene. Yeah. Which, do we want to talk about that? I mean, we can, she but we certainly don't have to. To analyze blood to determine who it is. But the problem is, the very next like scene is her doing the same thing with John Connor's blood. So why do we even need the whole Nancy part? We don't. We don't need it at all. Um, Apparently, we're all idiots. Yep. So, the uh, TX finds out that, uh, yeah, that is... Uh, john connor's blood so uh she ha- tries to find uh she notices uh kate and kate tries to escape she starts attacking kate asking where john is and the t800 or whatever model he is in this movie i feel like i think he's like technically an upgraded version but i don't remember what it was and it doesn't matter yeah the t801 we'll call him that uh shows up and they have a little tiff uh and he basically locks kate in a in the back of a like a tundra in fact, yeah. it is a tundra, and I like this. it is actually a tundra. Yeah, you're right. He, you know, he she said he asked where John is. She says, "If I tell you, you, let me go." He says, "Sure." She tells him, and he's like, "I lied." <laughs> Which is this kind of like Terminator humor? He no, dude. The Terminator is sassy in this one. Very sassy. I mean, he had those. He, he would have those glasses. Oh my! It would have been so <laughs> much better. <laughs> um, so they escape, but uh. This is something that happens in movies too. Another thing, and another just convenient thing that happens, and this time it's a little inconvenient, but it's still convenient that it happens, is uh, the T eight hundred one and John escape uh, in the tundra with Kate locked in the back. Mm-hmm. Kate tries to use her cell phone, and even phones today, no phone in the world pops up and tells you when your network is failing. 
It does not pop up on the screen fills that says network failure like it does in this movie. It'll say no service. Yeah, in the top little corner, but yeah. it's not going to flash on your screen. Because believe me, I have AT&T and I live in Winter Park. You have no service. I, I, have, I don't remember the last time I had service. <laughs> It's it's so far it's gone. It's been years, even though I've only lived here for a few months. So here's the thing. Uh, cars cannot be remote controlled. Not, uh, not like this. Not then, anyway. Retroactively, no. Modern cars, I could totally believe this happened because they're all runoff well, computers. There's you know cars that are built to be remote controlled, like self-driving cars and stuff like that. Right. However, just random cars off the street, you're, my, my car is not going to just start... You know, being able to... Somebody can't hack into my car. Skynet, man. <laughs> Anyways. Skynet. The TX programs these police cars to go after John Connor, and she follows suit in this giant fucking crane. This crane thing caused... Was, like, you know, obviously the big fucking thing in this movie. Yeah. It took forever to edit, forever to shoot, all this money, whatever. Uh, it's a great... I like it. I think no, it's, it's, it's like I, probably one of the better parts of the movie. Oh, no, no, for sure. Like, every Terminator movie has that awesome car chase scene mm -hmm. and i mean credit the rest of the movie's kind of shit but they got that in there yep and here's the thing they did all that spent all that money in this fucking like chase scene that lasts like a good 10 15 minutes but they still do a day for night filter yeah. at the beginning of it why 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 not just shoot it at dusk like or dawn whenever this is happening because you know they're escaping uh john connor happens to hit this guy's car and there's a little tiff between them for whatever reason. But yeah, it's like clearly day for night. Like it's supposed to be like the moon's out, but they're squinting because of the sun. Right. Uh, yeah, there's just uh, this car, uh, this chase scene is just awesome to me. I think it's great. Uh, there is a little, another little joke in here too. Uh, a fire truck uh, happens to hit uh, the T801 and just <laughs> the reaction shot of just the dudes in the car. Just, I got a genuine laugh out of that. I still get a no, good no, laugh out of that. No, that one, that, again, like there's bit, there's, Bits and pieces of like good things in here, but the whole thing, the thing a is a whole, yeah. a lot of rough stuff at the same time. The parts greater than the whole kind of thing. Yeah. Um. So this chasing goes on basically. Uh, the T eight hundred one John Connor and uh, I keep, I keep wanting to say Claire Danes, but her character's name is Kate, and Kate escape, and they happen to stop off at the same gas station that we've seen in Terminator one and Terminator two. Yeah, it's this always gas that is, same gas station. The gas station's seen some shit. Um. And we get this is where we get the toss of the hand bit, which seemed completely unnecessary. Arnold tries to take some food out of the gas station. The guy asks if he's gonna pay for it. And like, he gets the talk to the hand thing. Like I understand what they're doing. Like, you know, Terminator had all be back. He too had a hostile vista baby. Talk to the hand is not. Talk to the hand is not on that level. You definitely drop down. Um, and this is weird because he makes this talk to the hand thing, and then his music kicks in. Did you notice this? Wait, what? He does this toss of the hand thing, and I guess this is supposed to be the music that's, is it dyadic if it's playing in the movie, or nine day, nine diegetic, I, I don't know. Sure. Anyways, the, I guess this song is playing over the speakers in the, okay. and, and as it's, as he makes the toss of the hand line, it comes into the actual soundtrack as if it's part of the mix, but basically the lyrics are just like, it's like this kind of funk song, and it's basically saying that funky man, that funky man the whole time, and it continues <laughs> playing as he walks outside. I don't understand why it's there. I how did I not notice it that? It took me ever? completely out of the movie. And I was already like partially and partially out, but it's just really weird. Um they go on this road trip and John gets in the back of the of the the tundra whatever to talk with Kate. Mm -hmm. And he this is weird. Okay. We'll talk about this in the trivia section, but basically Kate and John knew each other before the events of T2 happened. Right, right. And they're saying basically the day before T2 happened, they happened to be in this guy's basement that was known for having like parties or whatever and yep. they made out but he doesn't seem to remember i can remember 95 to 100 percent of every person i've ever made out with you obviously then again i've never had been chased down by terminators that's it yeah, I, was, I was just gonna say i was just gonna say john connor's been like macking hard forever mm -hmm. but yeah the whole uh traumatizing childhood events probably played a factor i, in I that. still think i would after that many years i'd still remember who i made out with at whatever time yeah i mean he was what 13 in the he says they say he was 13 in the first movie something like that yeah. in the second movie i mean i don't know um this is also where we get such a hard ass fucking scene followed by another hard fucking scene. Whew. Her uh Kate's fiance 
has a super hard, brutal death that we only we don't even see. But just why does he get the the chainsaw, the circular saw to the whatever, and everyone else just gets shot or whatever? Why not? It's so personal. Like she like is in his bed. He wakes up, turns around, thinking it's Kate. Sees her. And you just hear the buzzsaw come out. Like, there's no need for that <laughs> to shoot him. Whatever you have to do. I don't know. Um, but yeah, he dies hard as fuck. And the, the uh, TX starts impersonating him. Yeah. And the actor like that plays the fiance is just creepy looking to He's me. He's got a weird smile. Like, he looks like... <laughs> he gives me the Steve Buscemi from Con Air vibe. Uh, the Garland Green vibe. Yeah. yeah. Um. So these FBI agents show up saying, "Hey, we found uh your, or oh, we're gonna go looking for your fiance. Do you want to come with?" He's like, "Sure." But again, it's the TX impersonating. Yeah, it is. Anyway, they the uh, T eight hundred one Kate and John arrive at uh, Sarah Sarah's uh, grave site when. Oh man, hey, <laughs> this part gets me. This part's still cool as shit to me. This part is um, awesome. Yeah, they get there, and, you know, John makes a comment. I didn't even know where she was buried, whatever. But turns out that inside Sarah's coffin is not her body. It's nope. just a total fucking weapon arsenal, because that's just yeah, the kind of woman that Sarah is, is. Yeah, like... That's s- one that, of the better parts of writing in this movie. Yeah, Sarah Connor was a badass, and this proves it. That's definitely something I can see her character doing. But to kill her off with leukemia just because, you know, Linda <sighs> Hamilton didn't want to do the movie? I mean, I guess. You could have just not... I don't know. I do like the little line where they talk about, like, she was given six months to live, but she fought on for three solely. Like, it's implied that she to make was, like, the Terminators to make back. sure that Judgment Day didn't happen. Yeah. Um, I do like that little line, but it does suck that they, like, killed her off off screen. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what can you do? Kate freaks out, tries to shoot the Terminator, and he spits a bullet out that she shoots at him. <laughs> That's kind of neat. Yeah. Uh, and then John gets all pissed, baby, and just has to be upset for... You know, for again, sassy, sassy Arnold in this one. <laughs> and so uh, Arnold makes this this comment as he's like choking him out, basically trying to like toughen him up, tough love, and he just yeah. says, you know, anger is more useful than despair. And I agree with that. I mean, it's a kind of a throwaway line, really, but it's good kind of philosophy for yeah. what this movie's about. No, completely agree. Like I said, I like that scene. This is by far <laughs> the most. <laughs> Like, you want to talk about the fiancé dying hard? This is the most brutal death scene, and I want to this say all of Terminator. This is insane. Out of the whole Terminator franchise, I think this is by far the most... Right. Let, let's let's paint the picture for okay. him. Go ahead. The fiancé... Or, sorry, the TX disguises the fiancé as in the back of the police car. Two FBI agents up front. They get word on where... The... T T eight hundred one T eight hundred one Kate and John. Kate Claire Danes and Nick Stahl are because I fuck character <laughs> names at this point. The T X hears this on the radio, shoves her arm through the driver's seat, and then through the FBI agent through his whole stomach, th- literally through his like <laughs> up to her abdomen. elbow, up to her elbow is through the fucking dude's oh, yeah. body. Oh no, yeah, oh, yeah. Like, Elbow is like at the front of this dude's chest. Yeah. A dude, not only that, but the sounds he's making. Oh my yeah. Are dude, so like the, he does not gut- die immediately. He does not die immediately. It's he just, is it makes alive. my stomach turn just the way the sounds he makes while we see this, and it's awful. It is so bad. And not only that, insult to injury, she drives the car this She way. drives the car <laughs> through him. That's the by far the most badass thing she does the whole movie. Yeah, like like it's that moment where I'm like Worth the ticket price. Like I'm like I'm not like I have zoned out of this movie completely. That happens, I'm like, oh sh- I'm back in. What's up? Worth the ticket price. Yep. <laughs> completely. Alright, so uh Kate escapes and you know, goes to the, the SWAT team that's yeah, there that's to, now waiting outside the Yeah, escapes cemetery. Them, thinking they're gonna rescue her. And then Dr. Silverman shows up, the one of he through does. through line, the one thread through this whole series, and just for this little cameo part, it's fine. Yeah, I guess. he has maybe about forty five seconds of screen time. He, he that. keeps saying that, you know, shit's insane. He tries to seem sane in this little he has a little arc <laughs> in this yeah. one little scene he's in. Yeah. Um 
then there's this whole badass scene where uh, Arnold is, takes the coffin full of weapons and uh, Nick Stahl and hops in the back of a hearse and say, has this, this whole that's, shootout. That's, that's awesome, though. Arnold walking out, coffin thrown over the shoulder, holding a fucking minigun in the other hand. Mm-hmm. And That's course, what I came to see. Of course, there's no no casualties. It's just just like T2. It's oh, the, basically yeah. the same scene, just toned down. Uh, and then he makes a little throwaway line that uh, throwaway line that uh, Kate is indeed going to be his wife. Talking about uh, John Carter, uh, John yep. Connor. God damn it, John Connor! Keep doing that. I never even Taylor saw, Kish is nowhere I never around. Never even saw movie. John Carter. Um, my girlfriend kind of stepped into the room while we were, I was watching this today. Like she kind of walked in, saw what was happening, and saw this little fight between. Uh, you know the TX when she uh he arri- she arrives as uh her, her fiance yeah and you know appears as the normal and they start having and he the T eight one shoots her with a rocket launcher like just out of nowhere just shoots a fucking RPG at her she goes this is just a very disrespectful movie to cemeteries <laughs> and I agree she's not wrong yeah, yeah I didn't even think about headstones that. get blown the fuck up You're like, right desecration all around oh man. Uh, good call. So they they escape and the TX is on their trail. Uh, this does this mean anything? This this big rig that's driving by on this these whatever road we're on is the promoting like it's um a truck for this uh, pharmaceutical company called Xenadrin. I does that no, mean anything? Um, like I just assumed it was like product placement. I don't think it's a real product though. It, Finding it, out. I was just wanted to wonder, curious about the prefix and the suffix, like if they mean anything interesting. It is a weight loss formula. Really? Because I think the thing, the, the truck even has a tagline of like embrace the power or something like that. <laughs> why a weight loss? Why, why is that, pro- why that no product idea. placement? I don't know. Anyways, they escape and my next note is, uh, you know, they do this thing where it's kind of like the Fast and Furious, but fucked up. Yeah, it's It's literally just straight up product placement. Okay. Uh, yeah, they're escaping in this hearse, and the the TX is on top, and uh, the TX one drives under this big rig, Fast and Furious style. But this time, the whole top half gets cut off. Yeah. Along with the with the TX, she gets fucked up. But the whole point about this, I wrote down, was my next note is the word flamethrower screams, because <laughs> her she's got this weapon, like her arm can turn into this like cannon, basically. But it gets damaged, and now it says that you know her little uh, Terminator visions, mm-hmm. the POV thing we see, is just says like alternate weapon online or whatever. And she like tests her flamethrower arm, but in the in the sound mix, there's just like people screaming as it's happening. <laughs> Did you notice this, or is this just me? I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> just so I was like, okay, I get it. Like flamethrower is bad. Got it. I don't need the the audio cues for it. Any, never mind. All right, I'm, so the T O one keep my mouth shut. is explaining to to John and Kate that Judgment Day is going to happen in less than three hours. Keep in mind, we're halfway through the movie. We're only halfway. Yeah, a lot God, happens. Is this really, only the halfway point. A lot, a lot happens in those three hours. I I feel like that's not enough time for what all happens at the rest of this movie. No, there's a lot. Um, there's this whole discussion that you know. Uh, the Tierra One's mission is literally just to protect Kate and John. Mm-hmm. Judgment Day is going to happen regardless. And you know, John makes this comment of, "Well, we can stop Skynet from going online. You know, it doesn't have to. There doesn't have to be a war." Uh, and this isn't like the T Two uh, Terminator where, uh, you know, he listens to every order. So the, the Terminator's just like, "No, fuck you. We're, I'm doing my mission." And he makes this. This. This is more interesting to me than the whole movie. Is this little idea? Is, you know, there's the Terminator says. It's your destiny to survive Judgment Day and everyone's mm-hmm. going to die, you know. And he pulls out a gun and puts it to his head and says, you know, well, fuck my destiny. This this idea. It's a bold move. This idea is way more interesting than the whole rest of the movie. Like, yep. Determining fates, you know, controlling your own destiny, all that kind of stuff. But it just ends with uh, the Terminator being like, all right, cool. Cool it, man. We'll go, we'll go you know, rescue Kate's dad or whatever. Um. They also make a note that uh, Kate is John Connor's spouse and mm-hmm. will eventually become second in command of the Resistance. Uh, and that we find out that the the T-801 or whatever you want to call him is going to be the one who kills John Connor in yeah. like 2032. Which is that I don't remember. Does that happen in Salvation or Genesis? Because I don't remember what those movies are about. Um, no, not. No, it does not. So this um, this little line doesn't isn't in the movies yet. Because salvation technically kind of takes place 
John Connor isn't John Connor played by Christian Bale in Salvation. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's not the leader. He's like a member of the resistance, but resistance, but he's not the leader yet. So this is like right before that he becomes a leader. Yeah, Salvation. Okay, and so again, this, this I, may why be, I may be looking back on that movie with like rose colored glasses, but Salvation was badass. So this little line but hasn't become a plot I point in any of the movies wrong. yet. No, 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 that's no. an interesting movie. No, too. I think like this is one of the parts where I'm like, oh, like that's kind of cool because it's because this is the part where you find out that like the reason the the Terminator gets Terminator back. isn't listening to John and mm-hmm. like basically being like, fuck you, John. Mm-hmm. It's because he's not programmed to listen to John. So does that mean Kate programmed him? Yeah. Does that mean that technically in T2, the Terminator that was sent back was from Kate? Or is this kind of like an alternate kind of timeline kind of thing? Now that Judgment Days had been postponed in the second movie, I think no. I think the one in T two was still sent back by John. Okay, and then because they prevented Judgment Day, it kind of changed the future a little bit. Yeah, they because they yeah. Okay, dude, uh, I don't know. The Terminator timeline makes no sense, especially now with Genesis. Don't I don't want to. Talk um. About it. So. This is my favorite line of, of my favorite note. Oh out of my all god! It's just we get introduced to who else but Fat Chris Hardwick in this movie. And have you seen? You did you notice that he's in this movie? No. Yeah, he's one of the the people. He's like one of the main featured extras in the whole Skynet system. Like, uh, he's the one that is standing right by the computer console. He has he has lines too. He's like a featured bit. How have I never known? Yeah. Oh my god, you're right. He's a big old boy in this movie, dude. This is where he said he was like a like his peak alcoholism, like I believe it. Holy yeah. Christ. Um Yeah, this is where we get introduced to this. Well, I mean, it's kind of introduced in the beginning of the movie, but nobody cares. Uh is that there's there's this computer virus going around and infecting different things, uh computer systems and servers and shit in the in the US. Um and this uh, Kate's dad has in charge of like this. I, basically, he's building Skynet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's like moments away from going online, and basically this virus is happening. And they're basically they're saying this, uh, their whole military is like indisposed at the moment. Like they couldn't yeah. use anything. Like it's completely vulnerable to attacks and everything. Um, and this 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 president that he speaks to on the phone is completely war hungry because he is just freaking out, saying, you know. I want access to my military. Uh, you know, turn Skynet on now. And Kate's dad is even like, we, you know, it's not ready. You know, yeah, we won't have like, control dude, of he's, it. He's kind of like, hey, buddy, calm down now. Like, <laughs> yeah, give us a minute, breathe, let us defrag. And the guy's like, nope, turn it on now. And shit gets fucked up immediately. Immediately, like, as soon as they turn the keys, they're over, like, and go. Ah, oh, shit, we're dead. Yep. <laughs> So, the TX shows up. Like, I was always, like, the way they described it in T1 and 2, I always imagined it was a little more... Like, days happening. Yeah, like, like it, happens it over didn't literally days. happen in 20 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> nope. It's just boom, 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 boom. The TX shows up, shoots uh, uh, Kate's dad, uh, at first disguised while as she, Kate. Yeah, while she's disguised as Kate. Kate, Dude, I'm not gonna lie, that kind of tricks me every time. I'm like, oh shit! Uh, it's still uh, a really cool oh, okay. scene, yeah. Uh, there, like I said, this movie is filled with little good. It good has stuff. its moments, man. It has its moments. Um, but yeah, Kate, John, uh, and the T801 show up and you know shoots the TX. But here's my question: How do they just walk onto a military compound like that? I'm assuming she has some sort of clearance. But, but you maybe can't, you can't just bring people in like it's a field trip, especially not this billion dollar thing that they're setting up the skynet that's like gotta be black ops as shit right and the only other thing you could say is maybe the terminator pushed his way in but okay i'm not giving details or names but i know someone who had a family member that was a higher up on a military base and they just strolled on in whenever they wanted. Was that Hillary Clinton? What the fuck is happening? You can't just walk into a military base. I'm just saying that. it is possible. Is this how like well guarded our secrets are? I feel like if you rolled up with this like homeless raggedy kid and a big Austrian guy, they'd be like, "Okay, I know you, but like, what the fuck's going on with these two? Yeah, you would. They would definitely have questions. Like, it, they're a, they're a shady trio. Mm-hmm. 
again, more convenience here in that uh, the bullets the TX shoots uh, Kate's dad with doesn't kill him immediately. Not only also, that. He, oh, go ahead. Just, when he gets shot, he's like, uh, uh. Yeah. There's uh. like no blood. <laughs> like the, he barely like it he, barely phases him. He yeah. just kind of like, oh, uh, not only that, but uh, he lives ow. just long enough to just long give enough. them important plot details and have like a moment to with to his daughter. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, Skynet is taking over this building, killing fucking everyone. Uh, the TX and the T-801 have this fight while John and Kate escape. John and Kate plus eight. Oh, um, there's a weird crotch Someone had thing. To do it. Yeah, there's a weird crotch thing in this fight with the T eight hundred one and T X. Like she grabs him by the crotch and by like the top of his head and kind of like uses him like a battering ram thing. But just yeah, she grabs is... him by the crotch and then you get a reaction shot of Arnold like tilting his head like wait what? And it's yeah, that's this is the sexy? most like sexual Terminator film, <laughs> and it's well, so weird. You know the 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 other name for the T X was the Terminatrix. Like as like a no, it matrix. fucking wasn't. Yes, it was. 100%. God, that explains so. I don't think anybody says it in the movie, she, but everybody refers she to her as that. the entire movie in a red leather outfit. Yep. Oh my god, that just clicked. Yep. Um. So as John and Kate are trying to escape, there's this drone. <laughs> Who wrote this <laughs> fucking thing? There's this drone oh that comes god. through and fires these missiles at them, trying to kill them. But here's the thing: they duck. The missiles go over. The missiles blow up uh, against a wall. We get a POV of the drone as it's flying in. It sees John and Kate, but is like scanning the area to like make sure there's no life forms. But you literally see them just laying there on the floor as it flies right over them. And Kate picks up a gun, shoots it down, and John makes a comment that she's a lot. He reminds her of her, of his mother. Of course, I don't she does. know how drones work, man. I, well, I assume that it would notice people drop into the floor and not being dead, like literally drop into the floor. Apparently to avoid not. Mo- yeah, well. <laughs> This billion dollar program is a piece of garbage, apparently. Well, uh, yeah. so the- in in its defense, <laughs> it didn't. I mean, it malfunctioned immediately. Technically, yeah. So, um, so the TX disables Arnold and Terminator's hacking Terminators. I guess this whole movie, she's hacking machines, machine on machine crime, man. Yeah. Uh, oh my god, is that like political commentary right there? It's you know, gotta be something like that. Um, Kate and John try to escape, and again, more convenience. It just so happens, Kate is an expert pilot. Her father trained her, as she says. There was this is a quick line, though. Yes, it's just like there's a plane we can escape. I know how to fly it. My dad taught me. (laughs) Perfect. (laughs) Let's go. (laughs) Apparently, there was an entire like deleted like part that explained how she like grew up on military bases. Mm -hmm. But apparently, apparently, they were just like. We don't need that. Throw that one line in there. Perfect. So they're trying to escape, and then the Terminator, uh, the T-801, has been reprogrammed to now destroy John and Kate. And there's this whole beautiful thing where he's trying to fight his programming, and John is trying to persuade him not to kill him. And basically, he shuts down to reboot while they can escape. Yeah, when in doubt, just turn it off and restart it. That's what that show the It crowd was all about. Just the, have you tried turning it off and on again? <laughs> That's it. It works. Uh, they escape to this like military bunker that where they think they're going to be able to shut down Skynet. Which mm-hmm. here's the thing: if they think that's the case, why wouldn't they assume there's people already there working on that? <laughs> okay, didn't think there was. An, I, I didn't think nothing. there was an answer. I got nothing. Uh, so they land there. They try to get the door. They try to get the door open to this bunker, and the TX shows up in of a course. plane and crashes through. But the best part is, right behind her is the 801 and crashes right through the the other the door she did in a bigger plane. Yep. Just got to do it bigger and better. Um, it's all about that one-upsmanship, man. Oh, yeah. They, the John and Kate, we're almost near the end of the movie. And there like I said, go. I know we're rushing through it, but there's, That's really, fine. there's really nothing really to there's talk about. Not a lot to talk about. Um, so Except jo- for the ending. Yes, the ending is the whole reason we chose this movie, obviously yep. based on the podcast, but also because it's I'm kind of good ending. I'm getting excited that we're nearing it so they get through the door uh the the t-01 has to keep the the huge blast door open long enough for them to crawl under uh the tx tries to get him and she starts she starts hissing at john like a snake did you notice that 
Like the eight hundred one's got her by the legs, so she can't get to him. It's a it's, sexual thing. I, I think. guess so. He pulls out. Been hissed at? Uh, he peel, pulls out like a fuel cell core, or whatever. Yeah. Puts it in her mouth. It blows up, but not before delivering the perfect classic line: "You are terminated." Oh yes, gotta say it. Uh, they blow up, so the terminators are gone. Now it's yeah. just John and Kate. They go oh, into this my bunker. God, here it comes. They go into this bunker, and this is yeah this this whole scene for me. And a lot of people hate this ending. But this, this ending fucking rules. This ending totally redeems all that you've sat through completely for the last hour and a half. They get to this bunker and it's filled with nothing but like eighties low tech technology. Oh yeah, like it's some war game shit. It's got like a little corner set up where like uh, the president can address the the nation yeah. in the case of an emergency. Uh, and they they find out there's nothing there, and that's exactly what John says. There's nothing here. We can't stop Skynet from here. And turns out that was the whole purpose of them being there was, one, it's a a nuclear uh, bomb shelter. It's safe from nuclear bombs. They weren't there to, they, you find out that they weren't there to stop just the judgment day, but just to survive it, which is what we've been saying this whole movie Yep. is you can't stop it. You can only postpone it. Mm -hmm. And And uh, I mean, it happens. Yeah, it ends. Judgment day starts. Literally the coolest thing is these, these. We get these shots of like farmland. You talk about farms. The, yeah. we, we see fucking rockets just going up out of fucking silos and going all across the the world, blowing shit up. And uh, John hears on the radio, you know, from people calling for May Day and stuff, and even makes a cute little line that now he's in charge. Yeah. Uh, and we get this pull God, out. This, in- this ending oh, is so this ending great. Is so good. I love it because you know it. It literally tells you exactly from the beginning. You cannot stop this. It's yeah. gonna happen. And. It, I'm so glad they followed through with it because this is an ending you wouldn't normally see. In this big- is one of those endings where I feel like if it had test screened not well, they would have changed. They would have changed it immediately. But I yeah. am so glad they didn't because yeah, I I can't believe the this- studio let them get away with it. Like <laughs> they're like, yeah, do that. That's a good ending. It's so cool. And we get this narration. The yeah, it says Judgment Day happens. Uh, we survived. There is nothing we could do to stop it. And what was it, like some six million li- six billion lives or something like that? Uh, something like that, yeah. Like basically, pretty everybody. much the entire yeah. like human population. And that's it. That's the down. end of the movie. It just happens. Yeah, like no, like no post credits, no like, epilogue, nothing. It happens, it just, dude. Like Judgment Day starts and cut to fucking black. Let me ask you this: If this was just a trilogy and this was the last movie in the trilogy, and we didn't have Salvation and Genesis, would this have been a good way to end it? At, like, it would have been a fucking bold way to end it, yeah. and I kind of wouldn't, because at I mean at the time were they planning more? Well, Salvation like, came out there... in what two thousand nine? Uh, so it was like a check. six. It was like a six year difference. I couldn't imagine they were ready to go with a new one right then. Yeah, two thousand nine was Terminator Salvation. So yeah, this movie didn't do as well as they were hoping it would do. So maybe they, I guess they didn't have it in mind. Yeah, I guess, originally, this was the trilogy. Is like it, it happened. <laughs> um. What about if we had this movie, but James Cameron directed it? Oh, shit. And it, we kept this ending. How? Wait, like T2 James Cameron yeah. or Avatar James no, 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 Cameron? No, no, T T1 and T2 James Cameron. Like, Oh, fuck yeah. I would have loved that. With this ending? Maybe, that, maybe that's what this is. Because if, if you haven't noticed, uh, if you look on IMDb and you type in Terminator 3, there is a 2018 entry that literally is called Terminator 3. Like, not Salvation, not Genesis. There's another Terminator 3, as well as Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines, scheduled for 2018 release. What if this is James Cameron being like, I want to come back and end it with a similar story and in my trilogy? Not Salvation, fuck Salvation, fuck Genesis. Do you see it? You see it on IMDb? No, I don't. Well, it, was, it, it was on there earlier today. Oh, I checked it. Untitled Terminator 3. Yep, there you go. What? Is, what? Not Terminator 6, it's Terminator 3. Yeah. All right. So that's the movie. Let's talk about some trivia before we get into our silver lining. Uh, we mentioned this already, but the gas station that the Terminator stops at is the same gas station from all the first three Terminator movies. Uh, the studios wanted to make a sequel to the previous Terminator films, but uh, for a long time, Arnold refused to do it unless Cameron was directing. Uh, but <laughs> this is so great of Cameron. And oh, so my God. Almost hypocritical of him, but... Karen told uh, Arnold, basically, just do the movie and ask for a shitload of money, um, which is, that's, that, I feel like that's 
Avatar. Like, yeah, just do it just for a shit ton of money. There's no creativity really to be mined else in this fucking thing. It's just Pocahontas, man. A Pocahontas in the future. Um, Edward Furlong was supposed to come back and play the role of John Connor, but that you know he was awesome. He was just a hundred percent in the substance abuse. Yeah, and uh, yeah, he wasn't. Yeah. Nick Stahl was cast just before shooting began in April of two thousand two. This is bananas, this next section. It's a little long, but let me get through it all. Oh, this is what you were talking about yeah. earlier. Holy shit. Arnold Schwarzenegger's fee for coming back and playing uh, the Terminator for this third movie was nigh $30 million, uh, which was a record at the time. I don't know who holds the record now. I want to s- no. I was going to say, I think it's Daniel Craig for Spectre, but I don't think it is. It might be someone else. Um, really? Dan- really? Hmm. Yeah. His contract was 33 pages long, and uh, it was it was written into the contract that basically he it was a pay or play fee, mm. which basically meant that if the movie didn't happen, he was still getting his 30 million dollars. Huh. Uh, he had a perk package uh, that included a lump sum of one and a half million dollars for private jets. He wanted a fully equipped gym. He wanted a three bedroom deluxe suite that was on location where they were shooting. Oh my god! Round the clock limousines and personal bodyguards. He also insisted, and he got this that he got twenty percent of the gross receipts made by uh, ventures from the markets that would include movie theaters, videos, DVDs, television licenses. So anytime this movie plays on FX, he gets a fucking twenty percent of that. Twenty percent. That is astronomical That's nuts that is insane when you consider how many people get royalties from their movie like all the crew and everything he gets 20 percent of it i know how he financed his campaign mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um this was just like a crazy oh thing God. yeah just the legal and accounting budget for this movie was two million dollars because of all this so geez i'm kind of shocked it's not higher than that yeah that's why the budget of the movie was so big because that by the time all this was done, like all this fucking like budgeting and everything for his for the legal department, it was 187 million dollars just to make the movie. And absolutely insane. Um, here's what we're talking about. Yeah, I li- I like this. I don't I don't even know if this has technically been confirmed, but I like this. I canon. back this theory so hard. So let's go back to T two. If everybody's seen T two, you remember at the beginning. Uh, right before the T-1000 finds John Connor in the gallery in the mall. Mm-hmm. Then he goes into this arcade with a photo of John. And he's asking kids, have you seen this boy? Have you seen this boy? And one of the kids that he asks is a little redheaded girl. I don't, You don't get a character name or anything. He just says, asks this little girl. He's like, have you seen this boy? And she says, yeah, he's over there playing arcade or whatever. Uh, the idea is that uh, Kate but- Brewster has red hair. And, you know, we mentioned that the day before T2, the events of T2, they were apparently were making out in some dude's basement. Mm-hmm. Uh, the idea is that that little girl in uh, the Galleria was Kate, was indeed Kate. And uh, that kind of ties her into T2 and everything. I, I like that theory. You know what I like even more with that theory is I want that to mean that the redheaded mullet kid yeah. in T2 is also like Kate's brother. <laughs> like that that's brother and sister. Oh, my God. How great would that be? Yes. I want that mullet kid to show back up. That kid was awesome. Me the redheaded mullet with a G with well, a denim see, vest. In my personal opinion, he grew up to be common in Terminator Salvation. Mm. Heard. That makes sense. Yeah. Here's what we were talking about. The TX is the, the, the scene where her tits get bigger. Uh, it, it took him several takes to do it because the air bladders under her, uh, Chris, Christana Loken's bra uh, didn't. It, it made the, the things didn't work. So they like... That wasn't a spur of the moment, like, oh, let's do this joke. They, like, they they're like, let's it. plan this out. And not only that, it didn't work. Like, one of them would pop, or the other one would kind of fizzle out like a deflated balloon. That's so stupid. <laughs> All for a joke that made no fucking sense. Oh, shit. Uh, we, this is great. So wow. Originally, the TX was not considered for a female. And here's some of the, some of the male... Uh, actors that were considered in oh, the running. Oh, my God. Can I read this list, please? Go ahead. Go ahead. Vin Diesel. <laughs> Number one. Shaquille O'Neal. I dude, I I, I Shaquille want O'Neal. That. I want that so bad. Shaquille O'Neal with the oh, and John glasses on Arnold Holy the whole movie. Shit, dude, uh, can you just imagine Shaq and Arnold fighting? I just think of that steel. Would be insa- oh damn! <laughs> or oh, moving Zan. on, Fomke Jensen. Uh, Fomke Jensen. That's of course uh, Jean Grey from the original X Men trilogy. 
And uh, also, she was in Nip Tuck. Mm-hmm. And the former WWF wrestler, China. China. Which I think both of them would have been pretty cool. I think Famke Jensen would have been awesome. Yeah. I, I, really I, mean, I, could definitely, I could definitely see her in that role. Um, uh, the only reason that uh, Christina got Vin it Diesel was because would have been interesting. Yeah, I'll watch that movie. The only reason Christina looking got it is because Arnold recommended uh, recommended her. Oh, really? Yeah. The infamous Sergeant Candy scene. Do you know oh, about this? Oh, I know okay. about this. For those who don't know, there was a scene that was, I believe, written in for the script, but I don't know if it was ever shot. Um, oh. Oh no! It was. Oh, it was it's shot. Oh, it was shot. It's a deleted scene on oh, okay. the DVD, sir. Well, I don't own the DVD. I wouldn't know. But oh, you haven't for those who don't know, the biggest question around the Terminator franchise is why in the hell does the Terminator look Austrian and have an Austrian accent when he's a robot? Oh, well, they decided this, to explain they, it. This this scene was supposed to explain it. So the Sergeant Candy scene uh, was a scene that was included in early prints of the film, and it explains it. It's basically that uh, Arnold's character was uh, this. This is so stupid was this uh, sergeant in the military that had a southern accent, and they were using him basically as a clone, mm-hmm. like to clone him to build these robots. Uh, in the scene, uh, there's a scientist that questions it, saying, you know, why would why does he have that stupid southern accent? And the other one replies, uh, the other scientist replies that they can fix it, which I don't know why fixing it with an Austrian accent makes it any better. But. Oh, okay. oh, so you haven't seen this. I've never seen the scene. Okay, there's more to it. Okay. So they're like, oh, man, he has a horrible southern accent. What can we do about it? Well, this other scrawny little scientist responds with, I can fix that, Mm -hmm. but Arnold Schwarzenegger's voice is dubbed over. Oh, I heard about that. For him. With a really big southern accent, yeah. No, 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 no. No? Arnold Schwarzenegger's Austrian accent voice, his actual voice, is dubbed over, is coming out of the scrawny little scientist. Oh, okay, okay. So that's the joke. that's, That's pretty funny. It's not. It's fucking awful. <laughs> um, as of January of 2015, this is the most expensive R-rated film of all time. All time. And I $200 million budget? I believe it. That's, yeah. That's a lot of money. Oh, okay. Sorry. Most expensive, not highest gross. No, not highest gross. No, no. Okay. Um, you remember that the bar at the beginning with the that we thought was like a Chippendale? Yeah. All those women that were in there, all those extras, yeah. work for Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> really? Every, apparently, according to this note, is that it says, well, not all of them, but most of them. It says several of Arnold's uh, employees, I don't know what he needs employees for, uh, all the women in, were cast in the, uh, as extras in the opening bar scene. Huh. So, there's that. Uh, Ang Lee was offered to direct the film, but he chose to do Hulk instead. We saw how that turned out. So he had like a lose lose situation. Yeah, he win. he wasn't winning. No I thought this was kind of cool. John Krasinski was auditioned uh auditioned for the role of John Connor. Could you imagine Jim from The Office? Fuck yeah, I can. <laughs> that would have been great, dude. dude he's a him, badass. Him with Shaquille O'Neal as the TX. Holy shit! Wait, we, this is a great movie. Okay, we'll make it here. John Krasinski is John Connor. Mm-hmm. I'm already on board. Pam as Claire Danes' character. It's Kate. Jenna Fisher. Mm-hmm. I'm in. Let's make that movie. Michael Scott as... <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Ooh, Dwight. As Rain the, Wilson as the TX. As, no, no. As, as the T-801. As, as the T-801 and Andy. As, oh, oh, or, or Creed. I'd take it either. That's a great movie waiting to happen. How has... Oh, my God. You know who else auditioned for the role of John Connor? Who's that? Ben Curtis, otherwise known as the dude you're getting a Dale guy. Oh, man. He auditioned for it. That would have been cool. Good for him. Dude, there's a Terminator. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Also considered to direct the film was Michael Bay. Oh, fuck yes. I would watch this movie. No surprise there. No surprise there. Holy shit. Arnold Schwarzenegger has said that Terminator Genesis is the true Terminator 3. The fuck it is. I, I, whatever. That movie was rough. It was. I couldn't finish it. This is my favorite part of the trivia. Uh, Linda Hamilton said that after reading the script, she turned it down because she said it was quote unquote soulless. I agree. But there's that whole funky man thing. That funky man. Uh, you gotta look at the scene, dude. I swear I to God, it's not just I me. I really need to pay more attention to the movie. This is where about. things get weird. I don't know if you've had a chance to look at uh, Terminator 3's IMDb trivia. Things get really weird really quick on there. So I, you can, you know, what I like to do is after I see a movie, I like to go through the trivia and just kind of scroll through and just kind of read up little facts about it. I have never ever seen something like this happen. 
What? Well, I think what, what IMDb does. This? I think what IMDb uh, IMDb does in their trivia section is they take whatever is gets the most like likes on or whatever, the, or people you know says, "Did you find this interesting?" Or whatever. Right. I think they put the most at the top, and then it goes. It just gets less and less as it goes. I was scrolling through IMDb's trivia, you know, getting notes for the show, and it starts to get weird. Like things that have like zero or one or two little interest are at the bottom. There's like 50 of these. Holy I'm shit. I'm just going to read three of them. There's like, go go look for yourself just just to see. But this is one of them. And apparently zero people found this interesting. But it says, when there's no combat, the future is more peaceful. That's an IMDb trivia fact for Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines. What does that even What does that even I don't mean? Know. Here's the second one. Bright lights don't affect the machine's vision like human eyes. Okay. And... I thought this one was great. Skynet Central has an unbearable smell of gas. These are trivia notes. Are you looking through them? Do you see what I see? Like, you know, here the spoiler section at the bottom of the trivia notes. It's right before that. There's just like 50 fucking weird notes that people put in. I got to assume it's one guy doing it, but. I, I, I mean, it has to be. You see them all though, right? Yeah, they're stupid. <laughs> It has nothing to do with the movie. It's just like little quips like that. <laughs> okay. A uh, Terminator can be capable of frustration if it repeatedly misses its target. I can understand that. When a Terminator punches, it can have the impact of a pile driver. <laughs> Shutting down Skynet was a global effort. At the base, the guards didn't ask questions. <laughs> they <laughs> that got explains a point. They got a point. That explains that. Um, all right, Mally. This we, is the whole, can I just keep reading these? There's so many. We'll be here all day. Uh, the whole point, the reason we're here, the reason for the podcast, what is, if there is one, I think this might be one of the tougher ones. Is there a silver lining to Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines? I mean, the ending, literally the ending is, the ending say makes up for the other, the whole rest of the fucking movie. Okay, but that's that's your silver lining. Yeah, no, for no, watching no, no, the movie. That's, no, that's the only silver lining. <laughs> Is there a silver lining for the characters for the world of Terminator in this? Oh no, not at all. They're fucked. So this is your <laughs> is this your first time throwing in the towel? You have no silver lining to offer here. <laughs> um, wait, what's yours? My, Why do I always have to go first? Well, because I'd like to see what you think to make sure that we didn't have the same thing. Mine's a little more. I won't say broad, but okay. I'm not gonna get into. A... I mean, I will say they're they kind of accept their fate at the end. Yeah, like they realize like there's no fate but what we make. Literally, it's I'm the end of the world. Line. It's literally the end of the world. It, yeah. Um. Here's I don't want to get into a whole debate about time travel or science, whatever. If time we will be here all if time's a flat day. circle. I don't want to get into the interstellars or the event horizons or whatever. But here's what I'll say: Terminator. To Judgment Day, they stopped Judgment Day, right? Or postponed it, at least. They think they stopped it. You find out in this movie, they just postponed it. In this movie, they postponed it, and it happens anyway. There's a chance that they could come back around in time, because if, if the future's not set, and that's kind of what... Mm-hmm. This movie kind of tells you it is set, but you can still kind of alter things. There's a good chance you can still, at some point, alter this whole thing from happening. That's the whole thing with the Terminator, like... They tell you the future's not set, but then they're like, wait, JK, some things are going to happen regardless of what you do. Okay, so well, here's the thing. They could just always come back and shut down Skynet again. Like, yeah, Just keep delaying just it. Just keep sending people back. I mean, if you're in the future and you send one person back, I would send like 80 different Terminators back at one time. Well, and like in this case, don't send them back six hours before Judgment Day happens. Like, let, yeah. Give the dude like a month or two to work or yeah. something like that. Like, or... Just send back like four Terminators at once. Have one or go that. protect people. One go protect so and so. One go shoot this dude. There, it's. I would say my silver lining is there's still hope that this can be fixed. And if it can't be fixed, if we're inevitably, you know, doomed to kill ourselves, then so be it. That's that's life. It's a silver lining for Mother Nature and for the universe, not for mankind. 
So right. for the characters, I think that's what they kind of realize at the end. They're like, well, this was inevitable. Yeah. So let's start building up this army to this resistance that can yeah, well, one day take him back over. No, like my silver lining is pretty much literally John accepting like his destiny. Like his this he spends this whole movie being like, fuck my destiny. Yeah. And at the end, he accepts it. So does this feel like a cop out that there really is no like true silver lining here? I mean, I will say this. John and Kate got together. Oh, you're right. After they fucking, you know, you are so resistant to it. Yeah. So, bam, there you go. I mean, you end up kinda, with love. Love for, conquers they're, all. They're, they're, a, they're a little forced in the situation, let's be honest. <laughs> I mean, it's not, it's it's like, it's like this is more of a gray lining than yeah. a silver lining. Yeah. But we did it. A pewter. We did it. Will. Silver lining, conquered, done. Um. All right. Pick me up movie alternative. I'll go ahead and go. I mean. You got to go with it, right? There's no other option. Like, are we, we gonna pick, have the, we same? Pick the same thing? Well, how about this? You, I'll let you have it, and I'll, I'll come up with something different on the spot. Are you sure? Yeah, go ahead. Take it. It's, it's, I mean, it was the obvious fucking pull. It's, but go ahead. It's the best alternative. Yeah. though. Terminator Two. Mm-hmm. Full title, please. Judgment Day. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really get much better than that when it comes to to Terminator. I mean, don't get me wrong. That movie gets dark at times. And mm-hmm. it does still kind of have a little bit of an ambiguous ending, mm-hmm. but I mean, all around, it's just fantastic. I agree. That's it, thinking thinking about that ever. movie cheers me up. I got this one, uh, not on the same line as Terminators this or science fiction, but uh, more along the lines of you know people that are and it's basically the hero's journey, like not right, wanting right. to accept your destiny, but realizing it's what you have to do. Uh, I'll say Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring. How about that? Okay. Uh, Frodo's told things are going to happen, and they have to destroy this ring. And I mean, obviously, it's a trilogy, but it's still a great right, movie. Right. And that one ends on kind of an upper note, if I recall right. I mean, does it? Yeah, Bormer gets killed, and he deserved to be killed. So, bam! Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. <laughs> he deserved it. Okay, he deserved it. Hold on. Are we going to get into a Lord of the Rings battle? If we're about to. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I won't say he did. He did some shady things. He didn't deserve to take six. He redeemed himself in the end. He was war hungry. He took six arrows to the chest and okay. kept fighting. But either way, that movie doesn't end on a downer note as much as Terminator 3 does. Yeah, and it's still a right. fun movie. You're right. It is a fun movie. Um, Anything else we want to say about T3? Hashtag lives. Um, <laughs> anything about uh, T3 we want to use before we wrap up for today's episode? Well, this week's episode. Um, I mean, if you haven't seen it, one would you are recommend you it? To this, would you I, recommend? I would recommend it because, like, as I think, the ending literally makes this movie. Yeah, it's a fu- it's a great ending. I think. I mean, like, it's ballsy. It's it bold. is such a bold move of an ending, and I'm so glad like it didn't get nixed at the last second for like yeah. a nice little bow or something like that. Because the ending of this is so fucking good. I agree um so thanks for listening everybody uh please subscribe and rate uh leave us some feedback like us on facebook if you haven't already just search silver linings podcast you'll find us uh if you have a suggestion for a movie that has a downer ending that you want us to review let us know we've got a pretty good lineup scheduled i think up all the way up until halloween yeah it's not it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty sweet october is gonna be a busy month oh yeah um I think that's all we gotta say for right. So, do we gotta offer a clue for next week's episode? Clue for next week's episode. I got it. Clue for next week's episode. Randall from Recess. Did you ever see the show Recess? I've seen Recess. Do you know who Randall is? Vaguely. The little snitch that's always rubbing his hands together. That they. God damn it. <laughs> do you get what I'm going for now? Yes. <laughs> Tune in next week's episode to find out what that hit means. In the meantime, I am Dustin Goes Hollywood. <laughs> I am Mally Moore. And as always, Excelsior. Excelsior.